Syracuse University lacrosse team rarely loses here at the Carrier Dome, a fact UMass knows firsthand. Their last visit here in 1992 was a dome disaster. Charlie Lockwood with one of 25 goals in a 25 to 12 Syracuse win. But two years later, this is a much better UMass team. Under fourth year head coach Ted Garber, the Minutemen are ranked 14th in the country. And an upset today would undoubtedly earn UMass a spot in the NCAA tournament. Super Sports, a production of Adelphia Cable Communications, presents NCAA Lacrosse. This afternoon, a matchup between number 14 Massachusetts and number one Syracuse. And a very pleasant good afternoon, everybody. I'm Dan Horde, and along with Dale Drypolcher, we're delighted to have you watching our Super Sports coverage of Syracuse University Lacrosse. Well, since our last telecast, good things have happened for the Orangemen. They've jumped from number three to number one in the lacrosse poll. And, Dale, that's where uh, Roy Simmons wants his team to be, gearing up for another run at an NCAA title. Well, you know, I got a chance to talk to the coach before the, the game today, and he said, you know, this has been a season of emotional ups and downs for Syracuse. One of the real keys they felt going into the season was to beat Loyola. And, of course, they did, and Loyola was ranked number one at the time, so they were really good for that game. Then the next week they go against Pennsylvania, a team not all that highly rated, win 18 to 15, give up 15 goals, kind of an emotional low, but I think one of the keys was Syracuse has spent a lot of time on the road at one stretch, six games away, and uh, they're glad to be home in the Dome, and they're looking uh, to, to head for that NCAA championship again, Dan. They have one home game left in the regular season coming up next weekend, probably one home playoff game, and assuming they win that, onto the Final Four at College Park, Maryland. Well, this isn't the first meeting this season between Syracuse and Massachusetts. In fact, it's not even the first meeting this month. The two teams met back on April 2nd. Syracuse won the game 16-9, and prior to today's game, we asked head coach Ted Garber of Massachusetts what weaknesses he might have learned about the Orange men in that loss. In Syracuse's team? Uh, not really. I think, you know, they're solid all the way through. I think uh, if you give them opportunities that they don't have to earn, they become that much more uh, efficient out there and dangerous and, uh, and lethal. So we got to stay out of those situations. Well, one thing that Coach Garber might not have to worry about today is having his players lose the ball to one of Syracuse's best players because outstanding defenseman Rick Beardsley will not be playing today. No, he won't. He's uh, he got to go to a wedding. His sister's getting married, and he is not playing today. So the, they've got a, a little bit of a break there. But I'm sure they're going to be up for this game. And Syracuse is deep at that position. Well, we also spoke with head coach Roy Simmons prior to today's game on the topic of motivation because UMass would appear to be the team with a more obvious motivation coming in since UMass can earn a playoff bid with an upset win over the Orange Men today. Uh, they have a great incentive and we know that too. Uh, where they are in national rankings right now, um, it's meaningful for them to come out on top. And it's meaningful for, uh, for us to hold that number one spot. We've, we've worked awful hard to bring it back after being given that number one spot uh, start of the season, having taken away and slapped so hard, knocking us down four spots, and then climbing and clawing our way to the top. We don't want to give it up in one week. Well, they have been able to claw their way back to the top. How does UMass try to pull off the upset today? Well, I think in talking to the Syracuse staff, they expect a lot of zone defense, uh, try to take uh, Syracuse into a half-court game and not give up those, those unforced errors that uh, Coach Garber talked about, giving up the easy goal to Syracuse. So with a zone defense, they can dictate the tempo of the game. And, of course, motivation always. Massachusetts seems to be in the bubble hmm. of that playoff, and they always come to Syracuse. So it's an important game for them. All right, we'll see if UMass can do it. Syracuse tough to beat here. The Orange been 84-5 and over the years here at the Carrier Dome. Stay tuned, we'll be back with the start of today's game in just a moment on Super Sports. Dan Horton, Dale Drypolcher from the Carrier Dome in the second meeting of the year between Syracuse and the University of Massachusetts. The Orangemen won earlier this month, 16 to nine in the Fleet Tourney in Rhode Island. Take a look at the starting lineups beginning with the UMass Minutemen under head coach Ted Garber. The attack, Valenti, Depp, and the freshman Brendan Glass, who is off to a brilliant start. In the midfield, Eric Bailey, Greg Klein, and Buddy Hoffman. Face-off specialist Sam Joseph is terrific, winning more than 60%. Defensively, Brendan Fry, Jason Foley, and Bill Wilson. The goalie is Tom Lepresti. Not Tim McGinney, but Tom Lepresti, who will be in goal for UMass today. And there is Ted Garber 
His father, Dick Garber, the longtime coach at UMass, 36 years for his dad. And again, Ted in his fourth year with the Minutemen. For Syracuse, the attack, Donegan, Doyle, and Morrissey. The midfield, Colsey, Lockwood, and Finn. Signor is the faceoff specialist. Smith, Schmidt, and Smiley will start a defense today. Alex Rozier in goal. Signor against Joseph for the faceoff. Roy Simmons looking on, looking for career win number 242. And the opening faceoff is controlled. Well, by no one yet. Still bouncing on the turf, and Chad Smith comes away for Syracuse. Smith, who has scored three goals with a big stick already this season. Doyle kicking it back to Colsey. Roy Colsey with 32 goals to lead the Orange men so far this season. He's had as many as six in a game. Now back to Charlie Lockwood, and you can see UMass bunching up in front of the goal. Right, it's, it's, it's the kind of thing that makes you really either get impatient or you've got to be able to take good outside shots. They, they want Syracuse to get impatient. On the other hand, Syracuse would like to take good outside shots, find a hole or a seam, just like in football when they throw the ball down. And uh, here's one that goes to UMass as they stop a weak shot and start the other way. Syracuse tried to feed in front, and it was intercepted by the junior goalie, Tom Lopresti. Mike Valenti had eight assists in his last game. He fed the ball to number 19, Greg Klein, who runs behind the cage. Now back in front to Buddy Hoffman from Long Island. Much of UMass's team is built from former Long Island high school stars. So you have a little bit of that Long Island versus Central New York rivalry that we have at the high school level. Eric Bailey running behind the cage. Now back to Greg Klein. Klein is from Huntington, New York. He beats his defender, but couldn't get a good angle on Rozier. Back behind to West Depp. Good feed. And the shot attempted by the freshman, Brendan Glass, was poked away by the Syracuse big stick, Mike Wittick. There are the numbers for Alex Rozier. Coming off one of his best performances in Syracuse's last dome game when he made 27 saves against previously number one ranked Loyola. Syracuse with a takeaway, but a bad pass upfield. Still recovered by the Orangemen. Good save by Jim Morrissey. Morrissey made a great save because Syracuse was uh, going to lose it. Let's see what they do. Oh, in the crease. Colsey made an excellent pass to Matt Doyle. But Doyle apparently stepped right on the circle that indicates he was in the crease. Let's see how they set up here, and Syracuse is going to put some pressure on the ride here. Make Massachusetts earn everything. They get it across easily this time. Greg Klein single-handedly running up the sideline. West Depp behind the cage. Mike Smiley out of West Genesee High knocked it out of his cross. It's recovered by the freshman Glass. Now it's Depp. Chad Smith pokes at him. Depp took a little time. They had like a, a unfair advantage up there, but they, uh, they couldn't take advantage of it. And uh, Syracuse falls in, plays their man-to-man -man defense. In most games, UMass would look to capitalize on those unsettled situations, but against Syracuse, you have to be patient at all times because if you get into an athletic battle, you're done. That's right, and, and they just made a good shot there. They got a they got a nice backup from West Depp. Shot was taken by, uh, was it Valenti or? It, I think it was. Mm -hmm. At any rate, they got the ball back in another offensive opportunity. You have to, as you said, take advantage of those. Don't give the ball away. As you saw there, it's been a long time since UMass beat Syracuse. 1981, the last Minutemen victory. Syracuse has won the last 13 in the series. There's a point blank shot save. saved by Rozier. Eric Triolo fired the shot. Charlie Lockwood runs upfield. Looks to beat his man, does. Left-handed shot and he scores. Charlie Lockwood with Syracuse's first goal of the game and his 26th this season. You know, everybody remembered Charlie Lockwood's shot, but it was really stopped, started by the save of Rozier, got the ball out because it was a point blank shot and Charlie Lockwood just goes left-handed and he beats Lepresti on the offside and Syracuse gets goal number one, but started all off. Dan, they took a nice shot on Syracuse. Rozier made a big save and started the other way. That's the kind of game that Syracuse likes to play. Tri-captain Charlie Lockwood with the goal, Syracuse with the lead, and Syracuse wins the faceoff. Dave Signor, who's winning slightly less than half of his faceoffs this season, and that could be a key today because UMass is an excellent faceoff team. They have gone up and down. He's a junior college transfer and uh, just getting into the system and learning it. He's been effective sometimes, but a little bit erratic, and uh, as you said, about 47%, I believe he is, Dan. 
Mark Fietta took that shot. It was a good shot, but went a little bit wide. Casey Donegan was behind the goal, and Syracuse holds on to the ball. Dunning had a big game last, what, five goals, I believe? That's right, five goals in a victory at Penn last weekend. This is Donegan being hammered by Jared Lanning. Morrissey back to Donegan. Feed back out top, shot, a low bounce shot, and a nice save by Tom Lepresti. Paul Sullivan took the shot for Syracuse. A little bit of a sloppy pass up field. Chad Smith going for it for Syracuse. He pokes it forward, and it rolls into the cross of the Syracuse midi, Matt Doyle. Watch that zone, they're gonna pack it in now and you've really gotta be able to, they're gonna miss a pass, Syracuse may track this down. Finn gets it. But, and Don uh, Finn will set up the offense. Yep, it's, it's get them into a half court game. You saw what happened when they ran the, uh, the fast break, they scored a goal. Let's make them play half court, let's play the zone defense and let's frustrate them, keep our sticks up, keep the passing zones and shooting lanes clogged with Maroon jerseys is the theory. Donegan trying to maneuver around Lanning. Back to Finn, the two-time first team All-America. Makes his move, pulls even with a cage behind to Donegan. Donegan looking, here's Morrissey. Morrissey trying to spot an open man in that zone. He runs a sweep, one thing the zone does, it gives you a lot of help if uh, when you know somebody's going for the goal, you can slide people because they're not that far away. See the slide right there, shot in the pipe. Tom Finn firing up, went off the post, and there is an obvious violation. Della Acano, I believe, uh, is the man who ran him down from the back. Watch, there's the shot. Now there's a, it's a sky ball, and there it is right there, a push. Syracuse gets possession, at least momentarily. And it's regained by Jim Morrissey out of Skinny Atlas. Casey Donegan. Dom Finn, he has a shot, goes a little bit high, and Doyle is the nearest man. Syracuse will hold on to the ball. One disadvantage if you're a goalie, there's a lot of jerseys back in there, not only your own, but the uh, opposing team. Sometimes it's easy to get a, a shot off where he can have his vision obscured. Tom Lepresti in goal. He was the goalie in the first meeting between these two teams. Gave up 16 goals, and that's nothing to be ashamed of against Syracuse, but scouting report on Lepresti is that he's been inconsistent this season. He gave up 17 to a fairly weak Harvard team. Dom Finn, good spin move, shot goes wide. Lepresti was there. Had that been on goal, it looked like Lepresti had it tracked well. And you see what it does, it cuts down the one-on-ones when you've got some superior athletes. You can get defensively some help. Now right there, see two guys on Dom Finn. And they're going to come up with it. Massachusetts, nice job so far defensively. Morrissey lost his stick, and the Minutemen took advantage. Dangerous pass up field, but it pays off. And here come the Minutemen. Depp looking for glass. Hans Schmidt was able to get his cross in and break up that pass and a whistle. Schmidt did a nice job because uh, Syracuse is going to be down a minute on a slash. He didn't let him get a shot off and stopped it. Watch. 17, Netwich. Doyle tried to make the wraparound takeaway right. and got called for slashing. So the Minutemen in the man up. We'll see Syracuse in his own situation now defensively. Syracuse earlier in the season, Dan, just going to say mm -hmm. it had a lot of penalties. They seem to have but they would be a bit more consistent, not giving up as many penalties. Obviously, they're moving in tight. West Depp took the shot, but he was at a tough angle. Goes over the end line, and Mike Valenti was there to hold on to the possession for UMass. There's West Depp, the senior from Garden City, New York. He has 23 goals this season. 45, Brendan Glass with it. He is UMass's leading goal scorer. And the big assist man is... Valenti, number 15. He lost now it. a takeaway for Syracuse. UMass lost the ball, and that's a penalty killer. They can get this in the offensive zone here. They're going to release. They got a release. Well, they're now all even. That's a big stick. Chad Smith. Chad Smith, yeah. <laughs> As I mentioned earlier, he has shown his ability to score this season. Three goals and an assist.
Syracuse keeping the pressure on. Ball goes out of bounds. Colsey tracks it down on a shot, so they will get another opportunity. Matt Doyle, who has had knee problems uh, last year, he was plagued by a knee trouble. You can see the big brace that he wears, and he's coming up limping a bit in the early going today. Incidentally, I've been cheating Chad Smith out of four goals. He has seven with a big stick this season. They're playing very aggressive defense behind when, when Syracuse gets the ball behind. Lanning has been playing tough to make a long pass against the zone. Good catch by Morrissey. Look at the bodies in there. Look at those jerseys. Look how close they are. The whole field is right in front of the goalie, filled with people. And it pays off. UMass able to clear it upfield. Bad pass. Now, that's one of the things that, you know, Coach Garber talked about. It, it, you get precious few opportunities as it is against Syracuse. Don't make a mistake. Don't throw it away. What they call what? Unforced errors. I always like that term. But <laughs> at any rate, that's exactly what it was. Syracuse is going to get the ball back where Massachusetts had a chance to put some pressure on Syracuse. And now Syracuse, who has been putting the pressure on, feeds in close. Saved by the goalie, Lepresti. Terrific save. I'm not sure how he spotted that ball. Syracuse leading 1-0. 6.30 left in the first quarter. Charlie Lockwood with the only goal so far in this game. Lanning gets stripped by... Tom Finn. Finn, yes. Finn gets it back up. Colsey's got it. 40-yard completion upfield. Colsey looking. He'll shoot and score. That signature Roy Colsey left-handed bounce shot. And it's 2-0 Syracuse. And it's, a, it's a classic way of beating the zone. If the ball's down, it's a fast break, and you've got an unsettled situation with a... A couple of guys advantage. Watch what happens. He beats and the spaces are not as filled with maroon jerseys and he takes Lepresti, stick side. There it is. And you see the congratulations as Colsey puts in number two for Syracuse. 33 goals, 10 assists for the junior from Yorktown Heights, Roy Colsey. Syracuse trying to win its second straight draw. One Reface. goes over the sideline, and they'll do it again. Yep. Toby Price on the faceoff for Syracuse. Toby's won 47% of his draws this season. Well, you can never have too many good faceoff men, and Syracuse looking for a little bit of a, a change from Signor, get some other people some opportunities. UMass doing the same thing. Anthony Pacone on this draw instead of Sam Joseph. Toby Price wins it. And McDonald out there already with the big stick was on the wing and he's playing defense now. Oh, long pass, ball down. Almost a spectacular one-handed catch by Morrissey. That procedure call, Syracuse loses the ball. Grande puts the ball down on the ground for Mass, now it's over. A successful clear, but not an easy one for UMass. Two nothing Syracuse, about five and a half minutes left in the first quarter. This is just the pace that Massachusetts likes. UMass trying to get something started. That was Balls a poor loose. pass, yeah. Track down, yes, eventually. Jeremy Murphy, who's from Marcellus, able to pull it in for UMass. He's being watched by Smiley, now back up top. Casey Costello, good spin move. Got a little breathing room on Fietta, but couldn't take it toward the cage. Yeah, Massachusetts, not only Syracuse Circus playing good defense, they're being very patient. They don't want to take a poor shot, and they get the ball stripped right there. Lockwood strips great the ball. Great strip by Charlie Lockwood, and he will sprint upfield. Lockwood with great speed. Lockwood looking for the spin move. Good feed, and what a save by Lepresti. That had goal written all over it for Mark Fietta, and Lepresti denied him. A little problem getting the ball out. Costello double teamed, slammed to the turf. That was no a good whistle. Hit. Good and hit. Here comes Syracuse. Paul Sullivan. 
Gets it to the open man, Lockwood. Charlie cranks it up and scores. There's the laser. 3-0 Syracuse. That's one of those unsettled situations. Lepresti, the left-handed goalie, was just at the mercy of Lockwood. And you'll see what happened, though. They did a great job defensively of Massachusetts bringing the ball up. Costello, he just gets put down, a legal hit, and not able to come up with it. Syracuse comes up with it. They ran it back down. Sullivan gets it off to Lockwood, and there's the result. Goal number three. That was a nice defensive play. That's the kind of thing that Syracuse does well. They, they make their own scoring opportunities defensively. So number 22, Charlie Lockwood with his second goal in the first quarter. It's 3-0 Syracuse. Signor back on the faceoff for Syracuse, and Colsey picks up the ball. Colsey off the wing, did a nice job, helped out the faceoff man who screened off his opponent and let Colsey come in and get it. Dom Finn stumbles, manages to still make a good pass to Casey Donegan. Morrissey open. Now back to Colsey, shot and a score! Roy Colsey with his second goal in about a minute. 4-0 Syracuse with 3.50 left in the quarter. San Joseph was uh, guarding him, number 23, and he could not stop the shot on that man. We just saw Lepresti watch. He ducks. He doesn't want to be part of that shot. And that will give them number four. Colsey's second. And Roy Colsey will be back next year. He is only a junior. First team All-American last year as a sophomore. Syracuse will lose. The other two-thirds of that great trio of midfielders, Charlie Lockwood and Dom Finn. The Cohen, a nice job, just got the face off. Started the fast break, but they're going to settle it down. they got to get people on and off. The Cohen is going out. His job, obviously, is just to get the ball, Dan. Hans Schmidt has done an excellent job to this point on Brendan Glass. Glass has not had a good scoring opportunity on Alex Rozier. And Glass, as we've mentioned, is the leading goal scorer as a freshman for UMass. One-on-one -on -one move by Eric Bailey. Back behind the cage to Costello. I checked that Murphy. Now it's Greg Klein. Eric Bailey. Bailey's shot goes high. Rozier hustling. But the nearest man was number 22, Jeremy Murphy from Marcellus for the University of Massachusetts. You're looking at Rozier there, but give Signor credit. He actually got a stick on that, made that shot go awry. There's the ground ball situation. Syracuse almost two to one in that department, 15 to eight. That's a good hustle indicator in it the is. sport of lacrosse. And it usually gives you a good idea. Not all the time, but usually it does. Oh, got pick picked play off. There. Shot hits the post. It did not cross the line. UMass thought it had a goal. Eric Bailey started celebrating, but his shot hit the post and did not cross the line. There's the transition. They're trying to get a big stick on. Save, Lepresti. Dom Finn's low bounce shot was saved by Lepresti. Syracuse trying to get the ball before it can cross the line, and Syracuse will hold on to the possession. That was, a, that was a great job. They really got to the line just before the ball went over, and Matt Noon from Massachusetts kind of gave up on it, thought he had position. Syracuse got there, and uh, they came up with another opportunity to take a shot at that guy. Lepresti, five saves, the left-handed goalie. That sometimes can give you some problems because you don't usually face many left-handed goalies, but has not been a problem so far. Syracuse leads 4-0, but Lepresti has actually been pretty good. He's made some difficult saves. Syracuse has lopped 14 shots at him. Dom Finn 15. fires the shot, and there's a save by Lepresti, and he runs away with the ball in his goalie stick. He was able to get rid of it before Syracuse could knock it out of that stick. <laughs> Chad Smith with a good pickup of the ground ball. He is excellent with a big stick at picking up loose balls. And it's not easy to do. That's right, it is not. It's very difficult to do. Colsey shoots, it goes wide. Donegan behind the cage for Syracuse. Yeah, tape two yardsticks together and go out and <laughs> try to pick up something with a little scoop on the end. Mm -hmm. Especially when you get, you know, got to put the arms down. They, they never seem to even have to lower their hands. They do a great job. Defensemen, my favorites. Colsey's pulls oh, nice to Donegan, save. and Lepresti makes a brilliant save. They got a little outlet problem, but you're going to find a little bit of a withholding ball from play. I'm not sure what, what happened. At any rate, uh, Syracuse will not get possession, but watch. Point blank, Lepresti, that left-handed mm. goalie, just a super save. 
and they get a goal on the other end. Just as soon as we come back from that replay, they have scored. Caught Syracuse by surprise, and it's a 4-1 ball game. Jim Burns is number 37, and he fired the shot by Alex Rozier. Fast break, and number 37, Burns comes up with number one, 4-1, 121 left in the first quarter. Jim Burns, a senior from Massapequa, New York. 5'9", 185, and he puts UMass on the board. Look, see Delo Acano, 32 there, the big stick guy. He's already in. He's on the wing on the faceoff. They use him there to be able to play defense. Now that he's going after, who was that, nine? Fiat shot yep. saved by Lepresti. And he's in the crease. Quick scoring opportunity for Syracuse there, right off the faceoff. Well, that's the kind of thing that, that, that most teams, when they play Syracuse, fear is that quick, unsettled, fast break situation that Syracuse really likes to do. But they create a lot of them defensively. But they got one there right off the faceoff, but it's Massachusetts ball. Less than a minute to go in the first quarter. Syracuse up 4-1. The Minutemen have the ball. Brendan Glass was open right in front of the goal, and his teammate did not spot him. Glass is 45. Hans Schmidt is marking him now. This is West Depp. Big Mike Smiley, the 6'6 defenseman, pokes at him. Smiley with great reach, obviously, one of the keys to his success. Yeah. Give a 6'6 guy a six-foot stick, and you got you got quite an area to try to get a jump on. Smiley replacing Rick Beardsley in the Syracuse starting lineup today. Beardsley at his sister's wedding. Jump. And the yellow flag. Fans don't like it. It was a nice jump by Hans Schmidt, 44. Watch him jump out right here. And he goes for West Depp, but he hooks him right, right there. That's it. That's a hole. That was a good call. So another man up opportunity for UMass. They're second. They're zero for one. The last time Syracuse knocked the ball down and Got it down and released their man, so we'll see what uh, kind of opportunity or what they do with this one. Only 12 seconds left in this quarter, and it doesn't look like UMass will get much of an opportunity. They'll hold on to the ball. There won't be a face-off, and uh, they will get the ball to start the second period. And they'll have 18 seconds left in the man-up situation at the start of quarter number two. Well played quarter so far. Syracuse with a lead, but it would be much worse if not for outstanding goaltending by Tom Lopresti. Our score at the end of a quarter, Syracuse four and UMass one. Syracuse's top two goal scorers, Roy Colsey and Charlie Lockwood with two goals apiece in the first quarter. It's 4-1 going to the second and UMass will start with a man up opportunity. Look at the shot. Syracuse peppered that zone defense in the first quarter with the 17 shots. UMass, eight saves. Good job, as you said, for Lepresti. Man up goal speaks for itself. Ground ball, Syracuse on top of that. Clears pretty even, and right now, this is the second man up opportunity for UMass. Ten seconds left in the man up. Pass intended for Mike Valenti. And he stepped in the, uh, he stepped in the crease. Mr. Valenti uh, put his foot there, and so they do not get an, another shot off. And that effectively kills off the penalty. Syracuse has not been scored on in two man down situations. Oh, poor pass. That's Smith, I believe. That usually doesn't happen. He did a sidearm pass. It was intended for number eight on the far side of the field, Morrissey, but they threw it away. UMass has a chance to come back to within two. 14-34, second quarter just underway. UMass trying to make it nine out of 12 on the clears, and UMass does. Syracuse leading 4-1. Jump. Ball saved behind the cage by West Depp. Back to Mike Valenti, and a whistle. Timeout called by the Minutemen. They didn't like something that was going on. They had, they just had the whole break between the first and second quarter to talk, and uh, Coach Carver does not like apparently what happened. 
There's one game left in the regular season for Syracuse. It's coming up next Sunday. Number one Syracuse taking on Michigan State. And then it's on to the NCAA tournament for the Orange Men. I, I think one of the things that happened there, I think that they said they called a timeout to mask a penalty, perhaps too many men on the field. Four, we got four officials and you can't count 11. <laughs> well, that's exactly what, that's exactly what they said. Four officials and you can't count 11. I, I wanted the quick timeout. That's why I thought it might have been a penalty because they'd had that whole time to get set. And, and what he didn't like wasn't the strategy, was the fact that they had 11 people on the field and did not want to give up the penalty. At least that's the sense we got. And we'll never be able to tell because one of the things you do, Dan, is you run all the subs out in the field as soon as the timeout's called and they go to count and they don't know who's there and who isn't. So a very good timeout as it turns out. Proficious. Avoided the penalty. Yes. Eric Bailey has the ball for UMass. Bailey still with it. Behind to West Depp. Smiley hits him. Bass in front. And now UMass has to slow it up. Yeah, they're, they're playing man down. I only got 10 guys <laughs> up there. Buddy Hoffman trying to beat Mike Wittick. Behind to Eric Bailey from Cheshire, Connecticut. Paul Pasqualoni country. Bailey gets away, fires the shot, it goes wide. West Depp is there for UMass. He beat Toby Price. Price took a hack and I think just got a part of the stick. Forced the shot to be off the mark. Good backup by Massachusetts and Depp, as you said, brings it in. Syracuse with nearly twice as many shots early in the second quarter and Syracuse leads four to one. Hoffman from Long Beach. Now the jump by Syracuse, or the trap, if you're going to use a basketball term. Whistle and a violation, and the ball will go to Syracuse. Uh, hold. And like lacrosse, they start, no, no not much explanation, just get the ball going, guys. Smith bringing it across to 32. Rort, no, Delicano was at him, and they get the ball on the save. Smith took the shot, but Lopresti was there for another save. I believe that's nine for the junior goalie for Massachusetts. Oh. Passing by UMass, the ball squirted toward the goal. Rozier had come out, but fortunately for Syracuse, it was offline, and the Orange men will get the ball. One of the, one of the toughest decisions you have to make as a goalie is when do I come out and when don't I come out? And Rozier said, I think it's now. And he, <laughs> uh, he, made, the, he made the hit and uh, perhaps forced the shot awry, but uh, you can look silly or you can look great. He looked great on that one, timed it perfectly. Charlie Lockwood beats his man. Now he'll pull it back and fire behind the cage. Casey Donegan. Syracuse up 4-1. Here's Morrissey. Lockwood was the cutter. Back to Sullivan. Sullivan shoots. Lapresti to his knees for the save. That's one of those long outside shots you have to take. And when Lapresti can come up with a save, now there's a fast break the other way. Chris Nentwich, number 17, raced upfield. West Depp has the ball, and it's over to Brendan Glass. Smiley shuffling his feet, staying between the goal and the player with the ball, Glass. That's really pretty simple. If you can do that and you have quick enough feet to change direction and do that, you can be a good defenseman. Depp shoots. He has the hardest shot on the UMass team, but Rozier made the save. Lockwood gets hit hard by Depp. Ball loose on the turf. Depp comes up with it. Smiley whacks at him. Depp shoots and scores. There's that hard shot. And Depp scores his 24th goal of the season. It's 4-2. to two. Depp did not even have to really cock it. He got off a nice shot. Smiley on the defense. But watch, he gets a step on him. He gets some speed, and he doesn't really even have to set. And he gets just the offside of the right-handed goalie. And it goes in for a goal. See right there, he's got it. Takes the left-hand shot. If he were only right-handed, he'd have had difficulty. But he kept it in the left hand, took a nice shot. Looks about 12. <laughs> It's a good play. Guy. Yeah, it's a good play by Depp, too, because he made the check on Lockwood that led to the ball being taken away to begin with, and he wound up with a loose ball and scored the goal. You're absolutely right. In lacrosse, you are not just a defenseman or an offensive person. You have to play both ways. Depp helped himself out and got himself the ball later to score. Syracuse scored the first four goals. UMass has scored the last two. 
And the Minutemen will get another opportunity, winning the faceoff. Nenwich up with it, 17. Nenwich through three Syracuse defenders. He'll shoot. It's high. They might, they're going to call a push. I think they'll call a push on that. Chad Smith called for pushing. No penalty, though, in terms of uh, anybody time served. They just the ball back to UMass, and mm -hmm. they are within two. And just the pace, as we said, 4-2 with about 10 and a half minutes left in this second period. And in the first four minutes or so of the second, Syracuse has not had the ball much. Colsey showing strong defensive skills. Now his man beats him. Save. Great save by Rozier. Stoning Eric Triola. Big hit there, but Colsey shovels it forward to Schmid. Now it's loose and picked up by UMass. There's a hit by Colsey. Doyle had it. Flag flies. It's going to be on UMass. Syracuse will have an opportunity. Upfield to Donegan. Colsey. Colsey. Oh, Low shot goes wide. They're going to call a slash, I believe. Yep. See if we can pick it up. There's Colsey. I believe the uh, penalty is on Murphy, the young man from Marcellus. So Jeremy Murphy, the junior, heads to the sidelines and Syracuse will try to score in its first man up opportunity. Syracuse 30 out of 81 in the man up coming into the game. Morrissey back to Lockwood. Charlie will shoot. Shot goes high. It was knocked away by, by a Jared Lanning. Lanning Syracuse did a nice has job. It. Yep, got mm -hmm. a nice, just enough of the stick to make it go wide of the mark. Doyle parallel to the cage. Donegan. I checked that. That was Cavavet. Now it's Doyle. Lapresti with a save. Another good save. He is tough. Procedure, perhaps, did he come out of the goal? I usually they say in and out. If you go get the ball in, you can't come out and go back in. Here's the save, though. What a beautiful save. And eventually came out and went back in, so the ball back to Syracuse. 11 saves for Lepresti. 9.30 left in the half. Syracuse leading 4-2. Morrissey. Great pass. Doyle will shoot. Off the handle, it goes way up in the air, and Cavavit recovers for Syracuse. The freshman gets it to Doyle. Charlie Lockwood thought like about he, going up and over. Thought he was going over, yep. absolutely. Got it to Colsey. His shot was knocked away. Syracuse still has it. Lockwood again to Even. Doyle. Bouncing shot goes in. That's a tough one for Lepresti. He has saved much tougher shots in this game, and that was kind of a slow bouncer that got by. That was not a man-up goal. They were even when that went in, but they were still in that man-down mode, and there's the shot, and took a shot off a uh, jersey, and it went into the goal. Yeah, it was deflected by his own man. Here's the shot again. We'll see. Couldn't get exactly who it was deflected off of, but... It went in anyway, and Syracuse up by three, five, two. Matt Doyle with his 26th goal of the season, and Charlie Lockwood picks up assist number 15. Lockwood with two goals and an assist. Sam, the faceoff man for Massachusetts, not able to come up with that one. He's in at over 63% so far, which is great. And Syracuse has struggled occasionally, but they got that one and another scoring opportunity. That's the that's the problem in lacrosse. When I say it's a problem, if you're the guys that can't face off, they just keep getting more offensive opportunities. Syracuse with nearly twice as many ground balls picked up. Quick pass and shot, and Syracuse scores. Jim Morrissey on the board for the first time today. Morrissey plunks it in a hole but it was a great pass, kind of a bypass. I think they thought they might be going around the outside again, and Morrissey popped out, and gee, he got a nice feed from Doyle. Doyle still not running very well. I, I don't think, I think that leg's bothering him, but it didn't bother him on the pass across the mouth of the goal, and he hit Morrissey with a nice pass. So the sophomore from Scanny Atlas. 
two-time high school All-America, gets his first goal of the game. UMass is able to come up with his face-off. Shot goes wide, and Glass is there to hold on to the possession for the Minutemen. That was Netwich who got the ball on the uh, face. He's going out now. And they get in the offensive mini and get the face-off man out. Syracuse 6, Massachusetts 2. Happy to have you watching our super sports coverage of Syracuse University Lacrosse. The Orange been looking for their ninth straight win and trying to stay on top of the USILA poll. One game left in the regular season, then it's playoff time. Syracuse will hope to make it to another Final Four, and since the Final Four format was started, Syracuse has never missed one. Spin move in front, hard shot, save. great save by Rozier. Greg Klein fired the shot, and Rozier looked like he uh, was able to stop it with his shins. It all it all stops. Uh, the body, the chest, he's, he's tapping the chest. Perhaps he stopped it with the chest. Let's see. Yeah, I think he got, brought the knees together, yeah, in the, in the thigh. The old body save, but they lost. Chad Smith lost the ensuing ground ball, and uh, it's back to Massachusetts. Seven thirty left in the half. This is Eric Triolo. Flag flies. It'll be on Syracuse. Triolo still with it. Bounce shot goes over the cage. Now we'll get the call on Syracuse. It could be Fotopoulos. He's big, running off. Yeah, big stick guy. So it's going to be a slash, another man up opportunity for the Minutemen. And let's see, they got him with a slash. He's on Triolo. And then I think he came across, got him on the head there. Pick one. There was, there was one in there. Yeah, the whistle uh, and the flag went up before he reached around there. Right. I think it was more when the uh, offensive player was directly behind the cage. Syracuse has been able to stop both man up opportunities to this point. There's an opportunity for Glass, no and it's waved off. He waved off, he was in the crease. That's what they're gonna say. You can see the look of disgust on the face of head coach Ted Garber, the young version of Hugh Hefner in our, in our opinion. <laughs> That's right. And you see, the, you see the ball obviously went in, but not before, he was pretty far when we get that shot, so. Incidentally, Syracuse, uh, what, 17 of, uh, only giving up 17 of 89 man up opportunities, man down opportunities, I should say, man up opportunities to the other team. Very effective and penalty killing. Lockwood looking for an open man. Charlie waiting for some movement. Now they'll swing it behind to Doyle. Doyle tries for the leaping goal and they no. say that he stepped in the crease before leaping forward. Kind of did the subway move, the <laughs> subway gate. Yeah, he, he goes the low route, and yeah, his mm. hand, no, it looked like his hand was down before the ball was there, so any part of your body touches. He did leave before stepping in, though. I thought he might have stepped on no. the line as he jumped, but the jump was fine. He touched the ground first before he took the shot, apparently. Came down about a tenth of a second early. Syracuse looking to add to a 6-2 lead. Fietta, pair of nines there. Costello and Fietta. Costello for Syracuse. Excuse me, Costello for Massachusetts. Gives it up. Triolo has it. Lockwood covers him. Massachusetts running crisscross patterns in front of Syracuse goalie Alec Rozier. Basically cutting 1-4-1 one -one and cutting guys off the crease, and they're going to get a hold. It was a wraparound check, and... They're going to say that they uh, impeded his progress, I'm sure, and they're going to give him a hold, and that'll be another opportunity for Minutemen, number four. Let's see, watch him watch him wrap that arm around. That's Traolo, and if you impede the progress, it's a hold. And Kevin Downey just said nothing you can do about it, and uh, he's right. So Charlie Lockwood off for 30 seconds. Man up opportunity number four for the Minutemen. Hey, 
Big crowd in front of the goal. And Syracuse will get it. Somebody there for the Minutemen, and they uh, stop it, bring the ball out to the side. Now they start to clear. Not only has UMass failed to score in the man up, UMass really hasn't had many good opportunities to score. Squandered a couple and uh, lost some opportunities by poor passing. Now they're even again. Rob Cavavit back to Charlie Lockwood. Get a good look at that zone again. Brian Eisenberg now. Back to Lockwood. Cavavit. Behind to Donegan. Back up top to Lockwood. You can see why you have to be a good outside shooting team to defeat this. They, they really try to make you pass to the guy who's way out up on top. And you can try to bypass, but it gets pretty crowded down there. And what happens is you oftentimes lose the ball, but they gave it up. Great steal by Cavavit. Lockwood, across the field to Eisenberg. Now Brian goes back toward the cage. Cavavit to Donegan. Lockwood's open, Charlie has it. Oh, tried to thread the needle to Cavavit, and Cavavit appeared to shoot before he had the ball. You can see what the attempt there is. That the way is to bring the ball around and pass as quickly as you can and get the zone shifting and cut back against it. Charlie made the pass against the movement, but uh, it wasn't there, and uh, Lepresti and company will have to clear. 425 left in the half. Syracuse leads 6-2. to two. Rendazzo has the ball for Massachusetts. He's 5'8", 180. Funny, he looked a little short. That's <laughs> a long pass. That's going to go out of bounds, and that's another one of those unforced errors. That was the uh, John Elway Memorial lacrosse <laughs> pass. <laughs> 70 rainbow. yards across the field. <laughs> Syracuse... As you see, Coach Garber says, I want, here's where I want you to play on this clear, on this ride. And they get up to Smith, and he gets it to Colsey, and it's as simple as one, two, three. Colsey. Across the field to Morrissey. Oh. Hit the post. Man. And the race is on. See, it goes That'll Massachusetts. Go to UMass. Yep, he was there. It was still a shot. West Depp did a great job of getting to the sideline just as the ball went out, and UMass will get hmm. the ball just over the midfield line. Morrissey's shot hit the post and rolled 60 yards backward before going out of bounds. And it's still a shot, and Depp was right there. Nice job by number seven. Senior out of Garden City, New York. That's a good indication of the speed of the playing surface here at the Dome as well, something that Syracuse likes. It's well known. Syracuse really prefers this kind of surface as opposed to the, the nice grass surface, which is a little bit slower. Looks nice. We'll have to play on grass at College Park in the Final Four. Oh, tough luck for Massachusetts. Bailey couldn't handle that pass, and it went out of bounds. Three forty left in the half. I'd have to say so far as we have a timeout by UMass, they've got to be fairly pleased down by only four with three forty left in the first half. I, I I don't want to say some people were saying you know all they got to do is look good and lose because they got two important games left. It seems whenever they come here, they're on the bubble for the NCAA's and. Uh, that's the problem, uh, but they do have two other games, and if they could beat Syracuse or even look good and win those last two, they figure they've got it in the bag. Uh, next game coming up, Michigan State, a team that uh, tried to make the playoffs from that Western division. They say Notre Dame is the team mm -hmm. that we'll probably be seeing in those playoffs, but Syracuse will be playing the Spartans next week. Notre Dame only has one loss this season and might have even made it into the tournament without getting that automatic Midwestern bid. They are, I think, ranked 12th in the latest poll, so Notre Dame has really come on. You know, the poll was interesting for a while. It, it, it looked like, you know, the, it always used to be the top four or five, maybe six teams, and then everybody else, even if they were in the top ten, but I think the competition's gotten much more fierce, and Syracuse, as you look, uh, six and one against the top 20, but a loss to Hopkins and uh, some close games. I think uh, they did it when they had to. They certainly beat number one when they were there. Loyola came up and lost. So there was a lot of time they felt on the road. He was, I don't think Coach Simmons was pleased with the home schedule this year. I, I don't think that uh, he wanted to be his way away as much as they were in a row, but sometimes that happens. Another good crowd in attendance at the Dome today, despite 
a terrific day outside. For Syracuse, it's it's great. Mm -hmm. Sun's out, maybe 70, 68. It's a tribute to the popularity of this program that even when we get an unusually good day on a Saturday, the fans still pack the dome to see the Orange Men. Now, pack, I guess, is a bit of an exaggeration, but <laughs> it is a good crowd today. Syracuse had a great crowd for the Loyola game a couple of weeks ago. Oh, long Aaron pass. Aaron pass, Smiley. but Smiley is there. Smiley bats it forward, and there is Donegan. Good hustle by Donegan to anticipate that loose ball. Here's Eisenberg. Flags have a down penalty on offside. UMass. I'd bet Steve Miller will make the call. One of my old uh, colleagues when I used to referee, Steve Miller, makes the call. So Syracuse gets a man up opportunity for 30 seconds. Only their second. They're zero for one at this Technically, point. they didn't score in the first one, but they scored a few seconds after it expired. You know, Dan, it, it often happens that way. Uh, people are trying to get back and, and get different positions, pick up different guys, because now we're even, and it so often happens right at the end or just after, you'll see somebody pick up a goal. Mm -hmm. Also, there might be that natural tendency to say, okay, we killed yeah. that off. Yeah, we did a great job. Mm -hmm. We relaxed it, Tad. Which... I think Coach Simmons felt that they did a little bit against Pennsylvania. Great pass by Doyle, and a shot and a score. Morrissey with his second goal, his second straight, in fact, and it's 7-2 Syracuse. A bit of spinning. Nentwich is on him, 17 in the zone. Watch. He's going to come across, makes the move there, beats one man. Now everybody slides, but not able to get in front of that uh, passing or scoring lane that opened up, albeit a small one. Morrissey put it through. That was about midway through the man-up opportunity. So it is a man-up goal for Syracuse. Morrissey had three goals in the first meeting against UMass and led the team, well, almost exactly a month ago. Is back on April 2nd in Rhode Island. Draw is captured by UMass initially, and then Finn is able to come back and pick up the ball. Syracuse up to a 7-3 lead in faceoffs, which is perhaps a little bit unusual. Coming in, we thought that uh, it would be more like a 50-50 draw, but uh, at this point, it can still be, but at this point, Syracuse is doing well in the faceoff department. Dom Finn fired that last shot. Dom has not scored a goal yet today, but wouldn't be surprised if he had a few before the game is finished. Dom you know, with 19 goals and 11 assists this season. You know, as you head toward the playoffs, two things you're looking for. A hot goalie and a real good face-off man can take you pretty far. Mm -hmm. Donegan switching hands. Kavavit feeds inside. Eisenberg tried to get off the shot, and the ball was knocked out of his stick before he could. Here comes UMass. Uh, Lanning had it. Dishes it off to another big stick. You heard the uh, sticks slash between the two teams and Colsey comes up with a bouncing ball upfield to Chad Smith Smith sees Kavavit open in the middle feeds Kavavit the freshman well that shot was knocked away and it's it's headed toward the stands Matt Noon 18 there's the guy who actually did it got that six foot stick up on him got it up near his chest and he had to try to go high and it went way high but Syracuse will get the ball back you talk about a game of conditioning Della Icano, number 32, sprinted all the way down on the fast break, lost the ball, had to sprint all the way back, and now he's playing defense on Colsey right out there, number 32. He's in good shape. How are you liking the socks on yeah. Della Icano? Kind of a uh, point counterpoint to the white shorts, the dark socks. Right, he looks like your, uh, your uncle mowing the lawn. <laughs> With sandals on. Right. <laughs> this is Doyle for Syracuse. 125 left in the half. Syracuse on top by five. I was a little worried about Doyle's knee. I saw him just stop and reverse field twice. He does lose the ball, however. Nice play by number 37, Burns. He gets it upfield to Nentwich. Bailey shoots. It goes wide. Rozier there. 
a battle of the fours. Valenti was going for it, but they give it to Rozier, saying he was closer to the line. Good hustle by the first year goalie, a junior out of Herkimer Community College. And how about Herkimer with a 47 game winning streak these days, going for another national title. Paul Worm's got a great program down there, a Cortland graduate. A lot of coaches come from that mm -hmm. school and he's done a great job. Gives a lot of guys a chance. And Signor and Rozier on this year's Syracuse team both played for Herkimer last year. That shot hit the post. Massachusetts trying to punch the ball upfield and the Minutemen come away with it. Now it's West Depp with an opening. Unsettled situation, Depp will shoot. Rozier went to his knees and the shot went wide. 28 seconds left in the half. Schmidt, 44, just tried to make his body as wide as he could, see if he could force the shot a little bit, but, oh, there's a tough one. Oh, nice what save. What a save by Rozier. Eric Triolo will never get an easier opportunity. Tom Finn has the ball for Syracuse with 15 seconds left in the half. One last rush for the Orangemen. Finn somehow holds on. Colsey has it. He'll shoot. Oh, He'll hey. score. With four seconds left in the half, Colsey from Finn. Dom Finn did a great job of holding the ball on his stick. He really was getting manhandled, and he did a one-hopper, one -hop pass, and just blistered the nets. Colsey did after he got that one-hop pass from Dom Finn, and he beat Lepresti comes up with his third. That was a nice looking little team up there between Finn and Colsey. A hat trick in the half for Roy Colsey. He has three goals. Morrissey has two, Lockwood has two, Doyle has one. And the half will end with Syracuse up by a half dozen, a good half for the Orangemen. Our halftime scores, Syracuse eight, Massachusetts two. At the half, Syracuse eight and UMass two. Roy Colsey leading the way thus far with three goals for the Orangemen. And even though Syracuse has the six goal advantage, it could be much worse. Uh, they've had really great goaltending from Lepresti. He's, uh, he's really done a great job. Started some fast breaks that uh, didn't really turn out all that well, but he's done everything that they've asked him. Let's take a look at Lepresti. Point blank. Signor, he bounced it up in the air. Look at him checking out the fly ball. Now, Alex gonna... Rozier hasn't had as many saves, but the ones he has had have been spectacular. Yeah, four for Rozier, but he, they've taken some point-blank shots, got the knees involved there. Hmm. There's a welt. That's right. <laughs> Check that out afterwards he in the shower. He can prove that save tomorrow, right? And then the other one he just takes and just gets mm. the stick, was out of position, dove back, and one of the things you got to be impressed with, I just think that he's getting better each game, and uh, both goalies are having good games. Taking a look at the first half stats. Syracuse peppered him, 33 shots, 20 for UMass, saves 11 to 5. You see uh, Rozier uh, only 5, but uh, has had some spectacular ones also. Man up goals, 0 for 4. UMass not able to take uh, advantage of those opportunities. Ground ball, Syracuse over a 2 to 1, and clears 19 to 16. Syracuse dominating, and uh, without Lepresti, it could have been worse, but I think UMass is still in the game. Syracuse had 16 goals the first time these two teams met, and the Orangemen are on that pace again so far today. Our halftime score again. Syracuse 8 and UMass 2. Back with the second half in a moment on Super Sports. Syracuse up by 6 as we get set to head to the third quarter. Dan Hort and Dale Drypolcher with you from the Carrier Dome today and happy to have you watching our Super Sports coverage of the defending national champion Orangemen gearing up for a run at a sixth title under that man, Roy Simmons Jr. Career record of 241 and 83. Not too shabby. You know, I asked him today, I said, do you get tired of this? He said, you know, the coaching I don't, but the stuff that's related to it, I think, uh, being on the road, the uh, recruiting, I think it gets old after a while. And, of course, he's been doing it since uh, before cars were invented. I think. You know, he's, <laughs> it's been in the family anyway for that long. I tell you what, he's... Uh, he does a great job, but he, you know, it's got to be, it's got to be tiring on you. But uh, he keeps coming back, and his team's obviously at the top of their game. Syracuse ranked number one. Here's the faceoff. Start the second half. And it won't be tiring next month when Syracuse gets into the NCAA tournament and tries to do it again. Syracuse wins the first draw of the second half. Here comes Fietta. Nice save by Lapresti. Picked right up where he left off. Shot taken by Matt Doyle. Nenwich on the outlet 
from Lopresti. Seems like Nentwich has uh, logged a lot of mileage today. How about that spinning, twisting move? Shot didn't get through. Rozier comes out of the goal, and Syracuse has the ball. And it's Charlie Lockwood. Nentwich will try to cover him. Oh, nice look. Doyle took a hard shot, got knocked away, and it's Syracuse's ball. They really tried to get it to feed the crease. Lockwood tried to feed Doyle, and he turned and fired the ball a little bit high, but a good intention as uh, that zone has benefited. And Coach Simmons either liked the pass or just heard a great joke, judging by that grin on his face. <laughs> Casey Donegan with the ball for Syracuse. Nentwich guarding him now. Is there more than one number 17 for UMass? There's a shot that looked like it hit the side of the goal. Great hustle Le by Lopresti. Yeah. Donegan disputes it, but uh, Lopresti's been hot all day, and that uh, when you hustle like that, you really add a lot to the team, and Lopresti got the ball back single-handedly as UMass clears. Nentwich. Here's Glass. Glass has been shut down today. Now West Depp. Smiley on him. Smiley's done an excellent job filling in for Rick Beardsley today. Presence of a second team All-American last year at defense and almost certain to be a first team All-American this year really has not been missed today. I wanted to talk to him too because he doesn't have any goals yet this year. Smiley, there's a jump there. When he jumps for that titanium Hole. Oh, they see Rozier right on top of that. That, was, that wasn't really much of a shot. It was kicked towards him. He really, good presence of mind and into the stick with Charlie Lockwood as they go the other way. Good balance by Charlie to stay on his feet there. Lockwood will shoot. Knocked away. I don't know if it was Lepresti or someone in front of him. I think Lepresti got a stick on it. But I'm uh, inclined to give him the benefit of the doubt. <laughs> He's earned it. Yes, he has. We're about two minutes into the third quarter. Syracuse still leading by the halftime score of eight to two. As Roy Colsey, the offensive star so far, three goals for Syracuse. I'm just gonna say, as you alluded to, a lot of Long Island guys, that Lepresti from Long Island, a junior. Morrissey had it knocked away by Jared Lanning. Nice poke check by Lanning, goes the other way, and Nentwich again. <laughs> gonna need a leg transplant Boy. when this game is over. Lockwood, ah uh, yes, free hand. Anytime they see that free hand bouncing around, they're gonna call probably a technical. Yeah. Mr. Miller makes the call, watch. There's the fake of the slash, he comes up in front, but now watch what he does with the free hand. So he's holding on the back of the jersey. And you can't do that. So Charlie Lockwood out for 30 seconds. Unless Syracuse gets the ball and gets it into the uh, offensive box before that time has expired. Just checking the stats here. UMass up about 22% on their extra man opportunities. About one out of five. A little low from what you'd like. Of course, you'd like 100%. You don't get it. You get up around 35%, uh, one-third. Uh, you're doing okay. UMass has not scored a man-up goal yet today. Depp had a shot there a moment ago that went wide. Glass. Nice look. Nice look. That was a good, good look. Freshman Brendan Glass, who came in with 29 goals, failed to score in the first half, but he's on the board in the man-up situation here in the second. I think it was Klein, 19, made the pass from behind. He did. And there's the, got by Rozier, just went by low, and Klein celebrated. He made a nice pass to Glass. And, the man-up opportunity is successful for the first time today. And the Massachusetts High School Player of the Year from last year, Brendan Glass, has his 30th goal of his freshman season. Possibly looking at a future All-American there. Delaware Cano, 32 in with that big stick, who's been on the wing all day today for the Minutemen. Ball's down, refaced, they say, so it'll be refaced. But I'm not sure where. John Desco rubbing the eyes after that call. 
I guess they'll go back to the face-off circle. Or the big orange S. There it is, the big orange S. You see the nice shot. Andy Robinson on that shot. And you see from that low angle shot, all the action as Della Icano, 32, trying to get it. It goes to UMass. Finally, they're in their own defensive end. And La Presti gets it up and they start the fast break against Syracuse. Chris Grand with the ball. West Depp being watched by Mike Smiley. Now way back to Eric Triolo. UMass down eight to three. Casey Costello watched by Morrissey. Costello with a left hand, shoots, Rozier saves. That was a nice save and it was a nice shot. He got it off without cocking the arm, just took a nice shot. Syracuse has to clear and they do. And here comes Jim Morrissey, former high school hockey player. And soccer. Colsey, he has three goals. That one didn't get through. You can tell he had three goals. He had three guys on him. <laughs> they get the ball back out quickly to a defenseman. That's Matt Noon, 18. And Noon still has it. Now a good pass to Glass. Glass passed up the shot, works in front, shoots it wide. Rozier uh, running. Rozier wins the race. He's playing with much more confidence. Uh, I see him in timing. He comes out of the goal at the right time. Earlier in the season when I saw him, I, I didn't think that he was quite in sync, but uh, it was just, I think, a matter of getting into the system and getting used to the guys that surround him, and he's done a good job, especially tough today. Syracuse with 15 more shots and an 8-3 lead on the scoreboard. Oh, tough. Kavovic, great save by Lepresti. Shot might have been high, hard to tell, but Lepresti was there anyway. Kavovic showing great speed. It leads to the takeaway. Here comes Colsey. He has Doyle on his right. Gets it to Doyle. Doyle, oh. shot, knocked away by the defenseman. Yeah, that was 15. Rendazzo got the stick up. There he is. He's the guy that knocked that ball up over the cage. And it goes Massachusetts way. Burns cross field pass, long one. Rendazzo delivers to Glass. Check that Lanning with it. Lanning maneuvers around Colsey. Now Colsey forces him to give up the ball. Picked up by Fotopoulos of Syracuse. Upfield to Donegan. Donegan will check out the numbers. Behind to Kavovic. Donegan again. Doing some changing and getting new people on. Number seven coming in for Syracuse. Eisenberg. That's the sophomore, the yep. transfer from Adelphi, Brian Eisenberg, and he has the ball. Donegan. Syracuse working around. See Back that, to Donegan. That zone in very, very tight around the goalie. It's like circling the wagons. And they just fly to the ball. Matt Doyle off the quick feed from Eisenberg. Shoots and scores, and Syracuse leads. Nine to three. Well, you hit the nail on the head. You have to have a quick feed. Watch these guys from Massachusetts shift. Look how much they move. Now the ball moves. They just all move to the ball, but they got the ball there just in time. They couldn't get in the lane and clog it up. Eisenberg makes a fast pass, and more importantly, he just took a real fast shot. Matt Doyle did not waste any time because with that shifting zone defense, they get right in your face. He puts in number nine for Syracuse, 848 left third quarter. And that was the first assist in Brian Eisenberg's SU career. He had scored nine goals, now he has an assist to go with the goals. And it was the second goal of the game for Matt Doyle. He's up to 27 this season. Tied for second on the team with Charlie Lockwood. Syracuse ball on a hold. He got Sam, the faceoff man, <laughs> Joseph for a hold. Has a nice ring to it. It does, I like it. Probably coined by Bill Strickland, the uh, old Syracuse assistant SID who's at University of Massachusetts and came to the game today. 
Oh, that was a that was a pass to nobody. Fietta wasn't really looking as the ball went by his ear and out of bounds. Doyle acknowledged the fact that uh, he triggered the pass to nowhere. 8.15 left in the third. Syracuse up by six. 9-3. The Orangemen looking to improve to 11-1. One game left in the regular season against Michigan State next weekend on graduation Sunday. Rondazzo takes it over with a big stick. Gets it way behind. And they're going to be offside, I think, here. Yep. So they do. Ted Garber, not really a screamer and yeller type. More of a ask the question after the mistake type. Yeah. Where were you supposed to be? Mm -hmm. Who was supposed to be back? And... Uh, they have improved steadily. I think they have a nice looking team. They've got two important games left after the Syracuse game. See if they can make that NCAA group ball passed, forced in actually by the laser, trying to get into Fiatta, but too many maroon jerseys and they get it out, start a break of their own. McDonald with it. UMass has numbers, shot by Depp, and he goes low to beat Rozier. Second goal of the day for West Depp. Nice sidearm shot with the wrists. He twisted it by. McDonald get the assist. So the defenseman gets the assist and he just took the sidearm shot and Rozier not able to track her down. Number two for Depp makes it 9-4. Back to the faceoff circle. See the 10-4 bulge there for Syracuse as they just lose this one, however. And here comes our man Nentwich. Pass for West Depp. Got away from him. Smiley tries to the takeaway, and Smiley, Syracuse yeah. will get it. It touched a Massachusetts player, and he screened off any possibility of anybody coming up with the ground ball. And he will get the ball in his cross, and West Depp will play him as they attempt to clear. Syracuse 9, Massachusetts 4. UMass actually leads in the second half, two to one. A little bit sloppy, but Syracuse is able to hold on. Yeah, I just wanted to check that they were on sides. They did get on side. Lockwood has Sullivan on his right. This is Sullivan. Kavavik. Now Donegan. Casey pulls it back. They swing it around. And it goes back to Lockwood. Delicano on him. Checking, poking. Cab of it. Again, back to Donegan. Andy Joyce, who's in. Hands back to Lockwood. Fietta to Cab of it. Mark Fietta. Joyce to Sullivan, and it's knocked away. It's real hard to get that pass in there against that zone defense. Oh, that's knocked out. Fietta does a great job. Nice give back. Let's see if Fietta can track it down. That was Kavavit who made the nice heads up look. A behind the back pass by Kavavit. We'll see it. They're going to lose it, but watch. Kavavit sees everybody coming and <laughs> tries to give it back to Fietta. Who was surprised. Yes, yeah, so off of his stick. So they will clear. That's Klein with it. Passes it. Over to Rendazzo. Good Back to Klein. It almost had the steal. Now it's Eric Bailey. Toby Price, the man guarding him. Price with a shove. Bailey gets around. Oh, took the ball right away from him. And got it to Alex Rozier, the Syracuse goalie. Upfield to Mike Smiley. Smiley checks out who's with him. Upfield to Kavavit. Now you know if Beardsley was there, he'd stick around with that big <laughs> stick, but Smiley goes back and sends a midfielder across. Syracuse has been a little reluctant to take those outside shots. Yeah, they've been trying to, I think they've been trying to force it inside and uh, it, it's 
tough. Now there's a fast, quick shot. Did Kavavit make it? No. Lepresti made the save. It had goal written all over it, and Lepresti denied Eric uh, Rob Kavavit. Kavavit, uh, nice shot, but it did not cross the line, and uh, Lepresti got it, got it back out. Another good job by the junior goalie. Less than five minutes to go in the third quarter. McDonald. Now it's Triolo with the ball. Number 34, Triolo. Guarded by Colsey. UMass has had 25 shots. Syracuse with more than 40. Nice, good check. But they not able to do anything with it. Hoffman lost the ball from Mass, but it's back to Triolo. The sophomore again being hit by Colsey. Colsey's a big, strong guy, too. When he hits you, you know it. Hmm. Valenti now gets around Schmid, looked in front. Hoffman, number 20, was there, but couldn't get it. No call on Finn. Oh, there's the whistle. Yeah. Loose ball push on Finn. That was a no possession penalty, so Mass gets the ball. Glass beat his man Eisenberg. Eisenberg gets help, loose ball, and Syracuse should come up with it. Oh, Tentative nice. Tentative effort there. Really nice play to save that ball in by Prandi, 36. Mm -hmm. Super job of saving the ball, and they're gonna lose it eventually, but not through a lack of effort. Wittick was a little tentative. He wanted to let the ball roll over the sideline, which would have let it go to Syracuse, but two men were close for UMass, and he might have been better off to try and scoop it up. A little more aggressive on the ride, University of Massachusetts, as they send West Depp down to play a little bit tougher on the wingman. There's a ground ball coming across to Kavovic. Oh, nice great look. look. Andy Joyce couldn't control. And now the pass way upfield is completed to West Depp. Depp has two goals. Syracuse leads by five, nine, four. Three ten left in the third quarter. It kind of, you look at that, they really didn't want to try to do the fast break. They waited until they got their people there. Nice shot by Depp. But, it was uh, high, but UMass will hold on. Yeah. Less than three minutes to go now in the quarter. Well, in the first game, it was 16 to 10, I believe, right in the fleet tournament? 16-9. Nine, okay. Syracuse perhaps a little bit better defensively, at least at this point with 238 left. They've only given up four. But... Uh, Been a good quarter for UMass. It has, nice shot. UMass will hold on. We giving Rozier a save on that? I think we are. Bob Jabenville will let me know. We give him a save. So it's up to seven now for Rozier. Kind of a quiet quarter for the Orange. Roy Simmons has been using his second line quite a bit in this quarter. Still has the comfortable 9-4 lead. You see the time left in the third, 2-20. So you got these defensemen playing way out on top and the short sticks behind, except for Smiley. They bring in their, kind of inverting their middies. Eric Bailey with the left hand now. Pushed aside by Price. Syracuse jumps him, but Bailey holds on, finds an open man. Valenti. Valenti still has it, and it looked like he stepped in the crease behind the cage. Decisive call, and it goes the other way, and they get people changing on the fly. Fotopoulos loses the ball. Well, we'll just take a look at that. You can see right there, yep, as long as it touches that yellow line, that's it, and he did. Back to live action. Looked like Syracuse might lose the ball at the midfield, but they got it back down to the attack, and that's Kavovic with it. Lockwood runs into the picture and catches the pass. Charlie with a couple of goals. They came early. He'll shoot. It's wide. Kavovic is there. 
120 left in the third. Burns was guarding a laser on that. Now they bring it in from behind. Oh, almost intercepted. Knocked down is that Randazzo. Good job, but who comes up with it? Syracuse comes up with it. Dave Signor. Nice pick by Fietta. One of those things you see in the game tape that you don't help get them loose. Oh, there's a shot. <laughs> High and wide in Lockwood. And uh, one of the defensive players Jim for Burns. UMass appeared to have some words. After the 16-9 win earlier this month, at least one Orangeman, Dom Finn, said UMass did a lot of talking for a team that lost by seven goals in that game. The cross is a game that engenders a lot of talking, mm -hmm. it seems. See time winding down in the third quarter. Kavovic spins to an opening. You got to give this zone defense credit for Massachusetts. They have done a good job. Tried for the quick shot. Signor couldn't get his uh, cross on the ball. Ball bouncing back toward the Syracuse goal, and we'll have a whistle near the 40-yard line. Push. Stays Massachusetts. Number four, Valenti. Quick opportunity. Valenti's pass. Glass tried to go around the shoulder. Didn't get off a good shot. Lockwood hustling for the loose ball. Ten seconds left in the quarter. Lockwood trying to break free. Five they seconds left in out. the quarter. Yeah. That's it. And Charlie runs out the third quarter. UMass actually won the quarter, two goals to one, but Syracuse still has a five-goal cushion with 15 minutes of lacrosse to go. Our score at the end of three, Syracuse nine and Massachusetts four. Dan Horton, Dale Drypolcher back at the Dome. Syracuse up 9-4 with 15 minutes of lacrosse to go. The Orangemen held to one goal in the third quarter. Didn't see a lot of the... Uh, Colsey Finn line and they are in there to begin the fourth. Fans complain a little bit. This is a little bit boring, but I think that's just the pace that UMass would like. Good coverage by Rozier as uh, Depp, or excuse me, Valenti took the shot left-handed. One high, uh, they'll retain possession. Let's check the stats. 46-27 in shots, 14-7 saves. Both goalies having a good game. Man up goals. One out of two for Syracuse, only one out of five, just about what UMass normally gets. And it has been a pretty much a, a game of goalies making uh, good saves, especially uh, Lepresti's had more shots to contend with. Syracuse now trying to get the ball out of their own end. And Colsey will do it. Fans come to life. Syracuse looking for its 10th goal. <laughs> they must have sprayed him or something with cold water. There's a save by Lepresti. Colsey has it. Oh, oh, tried for the hook shot. That's right. The sky hook. The, the sky hook, the old uh, Abdul Jabbar yeah. shot. <laughs> I don't ever recall seeing Kareem play lacrosse, <laughs> but if he had, that's how he would have shot. Uh, 14 minutes to go. Syracuse with the ball, leading 9 4. So you can see how a well played zone defense certainly keeps the score down and makes the pace a little bit more to the team that uh, plays that defense probably wants. Syracuse and you can bet that uh, whatever team plays Syracuse in its first NCAA tournament game, we'll see tapes of this one. If there isn't a scout here for some of those teams today. Princeton coach Bill Tierney was here in Syracuse's last home game, the win over Loyola. They're gonna call a ward? Yeah, they are. So Dom Finn gets called for a ward. Watch Dom here. He's, he's getting mugged. There's, there it is right there. There's a ward. Well, there was a Ooh. slash. <laughs> he warded first. Long rainbow pass over to Rendazzo, who gets it back to the middle. 
And Noon gives it up to Hoffman. Now upfield to Triolo. Brendan Glass. Watched by Schmid. Now McDonald. He'll charge in behind the cage. Tried to whip it around Finn, couldn't do it. Schmidt picks up the ball for Syracuse. Tough situation for Schmidt. He got double teamed and he loses the ball out of bounds. Nice job, uh, Valenti and also number 36 right there to help was Grande. Good job of getting the ball back for Massachusetts and they are fighting and clawing their way. As you said, they won the third quarter. They're gonna have to win the fourth by six goals here pretty soon. That's the only problem with UMass's strategy. It's hard to come from behind. It's kind of like running the wishbone, you know? Mm -hmm. It's Smiley on depth. Boy, I tell you Smiley what. Smiley just outpowered him. Well, when you go down on one knee and you've got a six foot six defenseman, you know, behind you with a lot of titanium, but uh, they lose it and the ground ball goes Massachusetts way for the time being. Hoffman didn't make a good catch. Fotopoulos with a nice little flip to Chad Smith. Smith starts the break. Oh! Gets hit hard, stays stationary. Ball's bouncing around and now the whistle will stop play. Timeout Time called by Massachusetts. We'll see from the pass what happened. There's the ball, there's Fotopoulos, gets it up in the rainbow pass to Smith. Now Smith's gonna draw a crowd, boink. <laughs> nice Chad was, was like a redwood and whoever Noon. hit him went crumbling. Matt Noon was the guy that uh, hit him. Looked like a, like a crash test dummy <laughs> slamming into a wall. One of those cartoons. 11.51 left, Mass takes the time. Talk things over. Syracuse on top, 9-4 with 11.51 to go. And there's, <laughs> there's a view of our booth. <laughs> I think I'll sit up straight now. Yeah, didn't your mother, my mother tell you? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's right. Dan, sit up straight, I've told you Well, you know, times. It's, it's these stools. The stool <laughs> is way too high. It forces you to hunch if you're tall. Uh, there we go. There you go, looking good. How you doing? Smitty, Bob J here, our assistants. Give us all the information we need. Ron Fralick. Right now, we're looking at Coach Garber, who needs six goals to win this one. And as I said, coming in, a lot of people were talking. If they just look good and lose to Syracuse and can win the last two games, they still got a shot at getting ranked up there high enough to, to be uh, in the playoffs. But if you look at the shots, 48-28, they got to take a lot more shots this quarter. And they've got 11.51 left. Long pass. They get the ball into Triolo. Took a while for Fotopoulos to catch up, but yeah, he did. He lost him somewhere. Hoffman, back around to Bailey. Fietta watches him. Fietta with a poke. Didn't knock it away, now he does. Ball's loose, Fietta uses his feet, gets position and takes it away. Great and Bailey job. lost his stick. Fietta runs away from the mass defender, takes the shot, didn't get through to Lepresti, it goes shot. out of bounds. Still a shot, that'll be Syracuse ball. They got good hustle, but you know, that's the kind of thing <laughs> that you say, how's the guy making All-American as a midfielder? And you look, he doesn't have that many goals. Those are the plays, Dan, that, that really set them apart. The guys that can play defense and then start the offense. They may not finish it off with the goal, but they were responsible for the goal just mm -hmm. the same. Roughly 11 minutes left. Syracuse trying to get into double figures, leading 9-4. They have been patient. They have not gotten impatient offensively. I've seen them in the past kind of force themselves, and it's been 12 minutes since anybody's put one in the hole, so <laughs> you've got to be a little frustrated. Ball's going to go off of Syracuse. I think Donegan lost that, so it'll be mass clearing opportunity. Burns take it over there, and he's going to get it into his goalie. 
And Lepresti, the left-handed goalie, gets it back out. Nentwich. Uh -oh. And Doyle goes down grabbing his knee. Uh-oh. Doyle is down near midfield holding his right knee, which was already in a big a brace. Yep. Now he's taking off the brace, and the Syracuse training staff will come out to take a look. That is not a good sign. We have seen that happen before when they just make a step. There was no contact. He simply put the right foot down and collapsed with the right knee. We'll take a look at it. There he is right there. Watch Plant. Kind of looked out of sync. Yo, twisted it right there. Mm -hmm. You can see he was running kind of awkwardly. Let's hear. Mm. Oh, yeah. It's new AstroTurf in the Carrier Dome this year. It's got good padding, and it's probably as safe as any turf in the country, but sometimes the AstroTurf, because of the grip, causes you to catch your foot yep. tighter than you'd expect and buckle your knee. And he was gimping earlier and uh, came back. Tim Neal will take a look at that right knee. Matt Doyle leaves with two goals and an assist. We get one more look at it. Watch that right knee with the brace on it. He pl plants it right there and it kind of rebounds and not to his liking the way it came out on the side and you can see he was grabbing for it on the way down. So Doyle will be out for the rest of the day. Hopefully that's a minor injury. Doyle was slowed last year by his knee injury. He was playing extremely well when he went down with the injury. He played very well today. Oh, long pass. Valenti loses it but gets it back. Smith on him. Good pass by Valenti and West Depp scores his third goal of the day. Depp, number seven. Puts it in out of Garden City, New York. And we'll take a look at it. There's the pass. Just a nice release, quick release. Smiley was on him, but he got the ball and got rid of it quickly. That's the key on that kind of a play. So they pull within four. This is as close as this game has been since it was 4-1. 10 minutes left, Syracuse is gone. The equivalent of about a quarter without scoring. We got a push Syracuse ball called by the back officials, so it will be on the UMass side of midfield as they bring it across. A little AstroTurf pass. The fans get a little, little antsy, Dan, a little uneasy here. They want another goal. Pace seems to have picked up a little bit on the offensive end. Lockwood shot, low and wide. You got to take shots against the zone, but you want to take good ones. You don't want to give up the ball unless you can get a good shot off like that. Pretty well camped. You got back up. You know you got back up. Take the shot. Signor took it. There he is, the junior. Another West Jenny product. One thing with the zone, they generally don't get as much back up defensively on that ball on a shot. Mm -hmm. Yes, oh Fiena no! Fiena hit the post. Excellent play by Lockwood. It looked like Nitwich had the ball. Signor shoots. Knocked away first. Morrissey will pick it up. And Morrissey swings it outside to Paul Sullivan, the junior from Scarsdale. Syracuse works it around. Lockwood. Morrissey. Morrissey's shot. Didn't get through it. Hit Nitwich. Ball bounces on the turf, and Massachusetts Rendazzo. comes away. Now a collision near the sideline. What's he going to call? Award? And it's on Syracuse. UMass will have it. UMass trying to pull within three. About eight and a half minutes left. 
Syracuse with one goal in the second half after an 8-2 lead at halftime. Yeah, they have they have gone south offensively, at least at this point. Oh, they Depp, let him alone. And Depp scores his fourth goal of the game. And UMass has come to life. It's a three-goal game now. Syracuse nine, UMass six. Depp all alone. Watch. They fed in the crease. They push out. Lockwood playing defense. Watch. There's Smiley jumps. And that leaves somebody open. And that somebody is Depp. And he is point-blank range. So when they jump, watch the jump. There goes Smiley. And that left him open. And he was able to fire point-blank range. West Depp, fourth goal. Little more than eight minutes left. It's a three goal game. Syracuse will get the ball. Well now, you know, you do not want to get impatient when they have taken some good shots, but when you got a guy like LaCrusty in a, in a defense that's really forcing you to shoot from the outside or force it inside, it's going University of Massachusetts way. Syracuse has been outscored four to one in the second half. Colsey, trying to work free. He'll shoot. It Off an the ankle foot of Jared Lanning. Yeah, Lanning took it on the ankle. Syracuse been playing a tough ride now. There's just a cheap. Oh, Kabovic with a steal. There's a violation that's going to be charged to Randazzo. Yeah, that UMass, was a smart. He saved the goal. Absolutely right. That's a smart. You know, in hockey, they probably give him one of those. Uh, don't they get a free shot in hockey? Penalty shot. Yeah, that's right. Penalty shot. <laughs> Let's see what happens. What you've got is you've got a goalie out, and you've got 15 on 15, Kavovit and Randazzo. And Randazzo just tries to at least hold him. He's got to get stick on stick. He did impede his progress, but he stopped an easy shot on an open goal. Syracuse in the man up, and the Orangemen could use a goal. It's uh, midway through the fourth quarter. Syracuse is leading by three. So with a very uneasy feeling here in the second half. They've only had two opportunities. They've converted on one, so they're at 50%. Morrissey in, and Donegan. Halsey scores, a much needed goal for Syracuse. Just what Dr. Dan ordered. At number four, by Roy Colsey. Roy Colsey did not waste time. The defense shifting. See that zone moving? Watch him get the ball to Colsey. They're still trying to get there. Boy, he did not have much room. I'll tell you, that shows you how important placement is. Watch how much room he has. They're sliding. They're trying to get in front of him. Actually, Dele Cano got in front, but he put it between his helmet and the cage. Fourth goal for Colsey, and Syracuse is in double figures for the 26th consecutive game. The last time Syracuse did not score 10 or more was the NCAA championship loss to Princeton two years ago. We're going to call one on Fietta. Technical push, 30 seconds. So Syracuse will be man down. And then sixth opportunity here for Massachusetts Minutemen. We've gotten one so far, one of five. So Fietta sits. One, three, two. And I think they're gonna run a one, three, two. <laughs> <laughs> Seven minutes right on the nose left in the ball game. Syracuse leading 10 to six. One man behind, three on the crease, and then two on the top, and they just will cut and replace as they make passes. And they went to the wingman on the three line and back out on top where there's two. Here's Depp who scored four times. They're even. Watch out. This is when it gets tricky. Uh, Syracuse plays a man-to-man. -man, so everybody's got to stop the zone and pick up the man. So they get out of that situation by not giving up the penalty. Shot in the goal, Buddy Hoffman on a tough angle. It looked like Syracuse goalie Alex Rozier got a piece, but not a big enough piece. Yeah, it did look like that. I'll be interested to see if we can slow it down. Hoffman just took a hard shot. Let's see. There's the shot. 
And you're going to see right, no, right over his shoulder, right over his stick side shoulder. Rozier did not get a piece of it, and Hoffman took a blistering shot. So Hoffman, a sophomore from Long Beach, comes up with a big goal, brings him back to within three, 6-16 left. And, and the draw is taken by Massachusetts. Delacano, the big stick guy on the wing, comes up with it. Netwich flips it back to the open man. Fans are getting noisy here at the Dome with Syracuse at least somewhat in jeopardy with a lead down to three in the fourth quarter. She's a little confusion out there. What's the... Let's see the call. Let's see. This is, this is on somebody talking because this was during a timeout. And it's Fietta walking off the field. Syracuse losing its composure. Not a good sign. Unsportsmanlike. Number nine, so. Roy Simmons remains calm, but no need for that behavior in a relatively no. tight game. Syracuse could be two men down. Yes, so they're gonna be two men down. Unsportsmanlike is non-releasable. Let's see, let's, we gotta straighten this out here. Now here, that's what I always like about lacrosse. Seconds, really Go, One minute, one minute. Is it on the same guy? Kavovitz off for 30 seconds and they're down two men. off for a minute. Yeah, but they don't have anybody in the box. Well, Fiat Fiat is standing the just side. to the left okay. of it. Mm -hmm. So they are down two men. There's Fiat standing just inside. And there's Kavovitz who's off for 30 seconds. So they can't release anybody for at least 30 seconds. The zone defense now is uh, taking its toll. Syracuse is going to be in the zone themselves with two men down. They got to box it up. See, there's four guys in the box. You just got to take your corner. And when they get the ball to the guy who looks like he's going to take a shot, you got to collapse on him. Oh, there's a nice play. They got the ball into the goalie. And now try to kill time. Absolutely. And I don't, oh. Wittick almost had an opportunity to score for Syracuse. But here comes UMass. They got to get back down now. They're, they're already down two guys. Well, now the they're on one. 30 seconds is, is up. Mm -hmm. So they're down one man. For 30 more seconds. Well, now about 25 more seconds. Glass, Wittek hits him. Back to Depp, looking for his fifth goal. In and around to, behind the cage. Now it's Valenti, who assisted on the last goal. Glass again. Three seconds left oh. in the unsportsmanlike. Great save by Rozier, and he comes up with the ball at the edge of the crease. What are they gonna call? Gonna call an illegal pick. So it's gonna be against Syracuse, against Fotopoulos. But the penalties at least have expired. They have been able to get that ball into Bailey a couple of times. He takes a shot. It was a nice save. Now watch. Now there's the ball. Now when he pushed, as soon as you're on offense now, you cannot do that. And uh, it is an illegal pick, if you will. So you see, look at that. 5-2 to two in this second half. UMass playing a great game. They have got 429. Here's Bailey, got around Wittick, shot was knocked down Smith. by Smith. Yep. Oh, dangerous. Very dangerous, stolen, great save by Rozier, denying Glass. 4.15 to go. Smith trying to come up with a bouncing ball. Still loose. Batted forward by Smith, taken by Fotopoulos. Off of but Fotopoulos. Knocked out by Hoffman, knocking it out of... The stick of Fotopoulos. Interesting, interesting. Hoffman uh, gave a little push to Fotopoulos. So they are calling. Boy, I tell you, these, this now it's exciting, right? It, it was boring there in the third period. It's come to life here in the fourth. People yelling at the officials. <laughs> UMass to the ball, down by three. Less than four minutes to go. Got to get some shots off. 
Costello faked a pass. Takes another. 3.40 to go. Costello nearly tripped. Oh, nice. Riddick hammers him and gets the ball. That was clean. Here comes Fotopoulos with a step. Good flip pass. The open man. Oh, oh and a pass for Kavovic just a little bit behind him. Great diving effort by Fotopoulos, but he couldn't get to the ball. Just, just out of his reach, but what a look. And they looked at Kavovic. He couldn't hold it, and it went out. And uh, that was as exciting as you're going to see. Fotopoulos gets the ball. Was at Donegan? Down inside, and then back to Kavovic. It was a nice look. But Fiata couldn't hit him. He couldn't catch it. 3.20 left. Syracuse playing a tough ride. And they make the long pass. They get it over to the defenseman. UMass trying to pull within two. That was Janning who brought it over for landing. Check that for Massachusetts. He goes back on side. They get the mini back. And he gets a little AstroTurf pass. Less than three minutes to go now. Hoffman shoots. It's high. And glass is behind the cage for UMass. I'm looking at who uh, U UMass has uh, Army left. And they'd like to just win this one. If they could knock off number one, it would go a lot towards giving him a shot. But they've got to get some shots off if the clock's against him. 244. Jump. Fietta tried to sweep behind Hoffman and take it away. Couldn't do it. Glass shoots. Rozier saves. Rozier coming up big in the fourth quarter. Big hit on Smiley, and he refused to give up the ball. Bounce pass was behind Price. Bailey comes away. What a steal by Price. And a great catch. Well, a near catch as it turned out. Ball's loose. It's Rourke Denver's in there, 16, but who comes out with it? Toby Price. Toby Price. Timeout, Syracuse. Let's see what the call is. John, John Desco. Desco. Very unhappy on the Syracuse sideline. And they're going to take a timeout. Ooh, John animated to say the least. Let's see, here's Rozier is going to take a point blank shot right there. Boom, look at that. He follows up with it, gets the outlet. He has come up big when he's have to. John a little more calm now. Blood pressure probably like 210 over 99. <laughs> And there's Matt Doyle who had to leave the game in the second half when he hurt his right knee. You see that the ice pack has been applied to the knee and at least he feels good enough to sign autographs. I was going to say, at least it's not in one of those immobilizers. You know, then you, you know they're in trouble generally, but uh, signing autographs and uh, putting some ice on it. But this has been an exciting fourth quarter, kind of a, if you're a Syracuse fan and not even a fan of just uh, Syracuse, but of fast lacrosse, it's slowed down to a pace that Massachusetts liked outscored Syracuse 5-2 and uh, have made a game of it. Syracuse tough at home though. Under the big top, 17 consecutive home games. And one more home game left in the regular season. Syracuse will take on the Spartans of Michigan State next Sunday following graduation ceremonies at the Dome. Syracuse is likely to get one home playoff game in the NCAA tournament in the quarterfinal round. And if Syracuse wins, it's off to the final four at Bird Stadium in College Park, Maryland, they Memorial Day weekend. That. And they know all about that place. Mm -hmm. That was the site last year. Syracuse beat Princeton in the semifinals and North Carolina for the national championship. So Syracuse with two under two minutes. Two minutes. Got to keep that ball in. Your offensive area of the field. Let's see where the ball goes. Still, Dom Finn, low shot. Rebound. And Lepresti comes up big in goal. Donegan tried to shoot behind the back, couldn't do it. Syracuse with the ball. Holding on with 1.30 to go. Yeah, they, they don't have to shoot. Oh, that's intercepted. It was at Rendasso. Nice job. He doesn't have it yet, but he did manage to knock it down. Ball's down. Out La comes Presti. Presti. And he'll run upfield. Great job by Lepresti. 
113, you see it in the corner. Valenti around behind to Brendan Glass. They're changing, getting some people on. Syracuse has to pick them up as they come in. We're in the last minute. Syracuse up by three. Poorly conceived pass there. Syracuse gets to the ground ball. Morrissey has it with 45 seconds remaining. Tom Finn spots the open man and Paul, or check that, Charlie Lockwood scores. Little insurance for Syracuse. The seniors hook up Finn to Lockwood. And it's 11-7 Orangemen. That's the kind of fast break opportunity that uh, Syracuse wanted to get and they got it. They would have been content to stay out and run it out, but when the ball's on the ground and they transition, that's usually the result, often the result. And it's just a nice pass by Dom Finn, and he hits a streaking Charlie Lockwood, who takes Lepresti, but boy, Lepresti has been super. 42 seconds left, I can't say enough about him. Syracuse has played an excellent game. He's two good lacrosse teams. Nice footwork there by Lockwood to avoid stepping in the crease. Down to 30 seconds to go. And Syracuse will have the ball with 29 seconds remaining. Well, those UMass fans that talked about, we don't mind if we lose, if we look good, and then the fate's in our own hands, we can play the next two games. They got it today. This has been a well-played game. Third quarter, decisive for Massachusetts, taking the offensive thrust away from Syracuse and slowing it down. 10 seconds to go. And Syracuse will have the ball with six seconds remaining. We'll see if Syracuse will just hold on or try for one more goal. Syracuse scored a last second goal in the win over Loyola. Syracuse, Sullivan, he wants to take a last shot. It's bouncing wide and that'll do it. Real nice lacrosse game. And for the 14th consecutive time and the second time this month, Syracuse has defeated the University of Massachusetts. The final score is Syracuse 11 and UMass 7. Syracuse will stay number one with one game left in the regular season. The final today, Syracuse 11 and UMass 7. Don't forget to join us for the final game of the regular season. Syracuse hosts Michigan State coming up next Sunday here at the Dome. Now for Dale Drypolcher and the entire Super Sports crew, this is Dan Hort saying thanks for watching and so long from the Dome. This has been a presentation of Super Sports, a production of Adelphia Cable Communications.